All right, hey, what's up, everyone? This is Eric. Um, glad to be bringing you a feature, doing something a little different. Um, kind of sitting in my old place where I used to do uh, hangouts, so really excited. But uh, today I'm going to go through a feature. Uh, saw some people posted questions about conditional start, a uh, feature that we released in Office 365 a while ago or a few months ago, and kind of wanted to cover that. So let's get started with that, and I'll show you how this works. So. Um, I'm actually in a list now inside of workflow and I have a workflow that I want to actually do and this is really simple I want to set up a workflow to send me a notification uh, this is just something uh, when a asset or when a new item is added to this so I'm going to send a notification so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go ahead and actually see if I can configure my workflow and one of the first things that you'll notice if you haven't done this before um, one of the first things you notice is the feature workflow workflows can use app permissions must be activated by your site administrator in order for you to use any start conditions and that's a really important thing to understand in 365 so uh, let me show you how to do that really quick and let's jump back into this so to do that really quickly um, go into our site so if you're a site administrator go into your site site settings uh, it's really simple to find and then you want to go to manage site features um, here if you scroll all the way down the last one workflows can use app permissions that's what you want to activate do that and you should be good to go so with that being said I'm going to go ahead and just do new alert on start conditions start conditions and this is again just to, to ability to do that really quick so start when items are created there's a couple of things you can do here I'm going to go ahead and enable this add a condition you don't have to do that I can actually disable that let me figure out how to do that undo that so disable hit add a condition it automatically enables it some really nice things there um, so one of the things uh, you have to understand what you're setting uh, when it comes to this um, what what are the criteria things that you want to actually set as kind of start conditions um, for me because this is assets around exchange and things that I'm using with exchange kind of just testing out some things here when platform equals a value I'm going to say the value in this case is let's go with SharePoint server um, this may or may not be in there I have to go back and look but um, that's one of the things you can also do a couple of things you can do and or, or here so if this or something or you can do this and something and there's a couple of things you can do with that uh, you can do a sibling branch and but what a sibling branch will do is say if this condition and the second condition so both conditions have to be met and then a different condition you can also do what is called a child branch here where you say all right if these condition conditions are met and then another set of conditions are met you can do or another condition another set of conditions are met and let me just go ahead and show you so asset type equals connectors as an example so this automatically pulled from the option that's a drop down that's showing inside of the uh inside of the list so there's a drop down and showing the connectors there so if that equals that then do something so i'm going to leave that alone um so that's an example here or let's just say if let's see here asset type equals um if it not equals to let's go with user defined actions as an example um and let's do and here uh sibling branch if platform is not equal to sharepoint so really weird i mean there's a lot of nuances you can do here um you can do that and that's on when a item is created um, so save uh, let me go back to that really quick because this is kind of interesting how that works so based on conditions I can look at the conditions here and it's basically saying that when platform is this and this so you're able to set your conditions within the start of that and then you can also configure that you can also run these conditions similarly to when an item is modified obviously you want to do a modification or when an item is modified if um, the conditions are met then run this on item modify and these are cases where you may be doing something you don't want to have something looping you want to restrict certain things so look at it from that perspective but that's how you actually configure the start event um, and then here I'm just going to put in an email address to actually uh, get that going add a subject because the subject is always important and then a body don't do this this is just for demonstration purposes um, but you'll see this be able to take when I actually hit publish new alert 
publish uh, it should be preparing a workflow build and then it'll actually publish that out so um really quick really simple done in under five minutes can you believe it but yeah the whole goal of this was to help you understand how conditional starts work how it actually runs and then hopefully see how to actually utilize this within your own office 365 environment <laughs> Eagle Double G. Snoop. Da 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 da